Welcome to A Woman's Brew, where women talk about beer. In case you didn't know, we brewed a beer. <laughs> and today we're talking to the woman who set it all up for us. I'm Joanne and this is Tori. Hello, hello, hello. And we're two beer-loving women on a mission to get more people drinking and talking about great beer. Come join us. Well, here we are. We're very excited because Tori and I, I both have this little can in our hands and Rachel's got one too. Um, this is the lovely Rachel. Uh, she has been on before. She was in our International Women's Day episode. But Rachel, why don't you tell everyone why you're here today and where you are from? Yes, because in International Women's Day, you were you're somewhere in a else. place. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm now a full-time brewer at Heist Bruco in Sheffield. Yay! Yay! That was just announced, like, was it yesterday? Yeah, this yeah, week, yeah. yeah. Yay! Yeah. Oh, so that's exciting. exciting. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I invited Tori and Joe to come and brew with me. Unfortunately, made the recipe and then couldn't brew it. Oh. <laughs> um, but... Scott and Chris looked after them, made the beer together, and now we have it in the can. Yeah, I'm really excited. Basically, before we just to give the backstory, and it's like, so yeah, you. It's like we brewed together, sort of, because (laughs) you were like, "Do you guys want to come brew?" And we were like, "Absolutely!" Like, not going to say no to that opportunity. It's going to be amazing. It was our chance to finally get to meet you in person as well. (laughs) Well, Joe had met you, but like I hadn't met you in person. I was like, "Oh, it's going to be so good! It's going to be so good!" planned it we basically we just for time scale for people to know we had sort of the first chat to discuss what we were going to brew on the 14th of September and then we headed up to do the brewing on the 22nd of October um and like was it the day it was the day before because we were headed we were driving up that night before yeah yeah we got a message from you really sorry guys <laughs> got covid yeah we were like oh no but the guys were so the one so good. Like, the guys were so yeah. good they were so helpful obviously we missed you we were sending you pictures like <laughs> constantly like yeah. we're crying we're so sad yeah. but um the experience was so good just in general overall and they were such lovely guys to take over and, and do we were say, so like thank you for helping like, <laughs> literally everybody that we spoke to like at heist and in other places that we went to while we were there was just like oh my god you're here to brew with Rachel and she can't be there and it's so sad and like everybody was so upset yeah. <laughs> it was it, like the community in Sheffield is just amazing I don't think so people nice. talk about the beer the beer scene and the beer community in Sheffield enough people are so friendly so amazing. <laughs> everyone said hi to us like everywhere yeah. we went we were like, <laughs> so we were like hi <laughs> such lovely people just full stop yeah. but yeah that was like that Most was so sad is, like we don't yeah. say hello to anybody <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah i forget this i'm like what do you mean everyone was friendly of course <laughs> <they were friendly. laughs> like, honestly like down here if someone says hi to you you're like what like do i know you what, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. you're like, oh, they, they must be talking to someone else you just ignore them <laughs> up up there everyone was like i saw you at high school you were brewing a beer with them weren't you we were like yeah, and then they were like, when's it going to oh, be ready? ready? What's it going to be? We're just like, so oh, people want to talk to us. Like, this is cool. And yeah. then they were like, what brewery are you from? We're like, we're not. <laughs> we're from like a was, podcast. Yeah, well, yeah, but it was it was just such a cool and surreal experience. Yeah. And I will say, like, having this in my hands is absolutely crazy. Seeing it I'm on so the excited. live board. Uh, yeah, yeah. For, so, Heist, we can talk about the space. Yeah. let's try the beer first we can talk about the space after it's an amazing space in general but you guys the website has like a live board of what's on your your tap list and I was like what's on the tap list now and then I happened to see it was listed and I was like oh, the beer we brewed <laughs> is on the tap list that's amazing I'm gonna um, take a screenshot and then yeah we'll put it in yeah. and be like ha 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 look what we did it's <laughs> but it's such a surreal experience being like I don't work for a brewery but I helped make something that is on a tap board and it's in my hands like it's amazingly crazy amazingly cool i'll let one of you guys say what, what is it that we brewed i'll let you guys intro it um right so we decided collectively that we would brew a peanut butter and jelly porter and it's called when the beer is so lit you turn into a bagel <laughs> which i feel bad 
because Rachel, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Bad? I'm so sorry, Rachel, because she had no input into this. <laughs> <laughs> we had we had that's true. We had a list of like. I had a list of like stupid amounts of names, like some stuff that made sense. I think the first one that we came up with when we were chatting together, which surprisingly coming up with this bit, we were like, we had a Zoom call ready to go. Like I said, we had a Zoom call on the 14th. You were like, look, where's your oyster? You can be creative if you want. We've got enough time to get ingredients. I was like, what, like, what are we allowed to? I don't want to get too crazy. You were like, just do it. As long as it's not something we've already did, already done. So it's like pumpkin was out of it. Um, there's some other things yeah. that were out of it, and we we're like, okay, fine, that's fine. And I, I was like, peanut butter and jelly porter, and you were just <laughs> like, we can do that. So that was a surprisingly <laughs> easy decision. And then we had some really on point names, like I said, uh, <laughs> yeah. be- better together. And then you were like, butter. Rachel was like, butter together, and I was like, yeah, that's a really, really good one. We had all these names that made sense. But then I saw a meme like the night before <laughs> when I was Sheffield. It was the Monday before because we were recording something else and you showed it to me. And I couldn't stop laughing at this yeah. meme that says, when the violin is so lit, you just turn into a bagel. <laughs> and it just killed me. And I was like, this is so good. And they were like, how funny would it be if that's just what we called it? And I was like, haha, I'm going to write it on this name, on this list of names. <laughs> but then... For anyone that doesn't know that, so I went up there and I had to work the first half of the day that we were brewing this beer. So I was sat there working as Joe was going through um, doing like the graphic design side of it and the naming side of it. And she was like, I'm on the call and she's going, the list of names. And I was like, yeah, here, take my phone. And I had forgotten <laughs> that it was on there. <laughs> well, I barely got through the list. Like, I think I've said the first two and we were talking with Chris about how highest name that is because they've all yeah. got really interesting names um i've been doing i've been catching up on my untapped check-ins and um one of my favorites was um there's a pigeon in the vault oh yeah oh <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> you can't find a good car boot these days um and uh, my particular favorite that i had to explain to tori while we were at the tap room is um um one time I rushed a Sooty concert. Oh, yeah. I rushed, oh, I rushed yeah. the stage at a Sooty <laughs> show. Or well, that time I rushed the stage at a Sooty show. She was, she was talking about show. it. I can't even she say was, it. They were yeah, talking about it. We were and I was talking like, about it. And she's just, she, she, did, like, she did the like face. Your, she's like, you're dead because you don't, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so I was like, do like, you know who Sooty is? And she was like, I think no. it's because they were all going, like, ha ha ha, like, yes, yeah. this, this thing. And I was like, and she went, you, mm. you just, you have no idea, do you? I just like, who City was. No. And then we were having a deep conversation about um, the relationships between the characters in City. Oh, my. If we've got, yeah. if we've got any anybody outside of the UK, City <laughs> um, is a yellow bear hand puppet. He doesn't speak, but he does do magic. <laughs> um, and he has a grey dog friend called Sweep who squeaks and a panda friend called sue and she is a girl and she can speak because obviously she's the most intelligent one <laughs> and then and then also there's little cousin scampy who is who is sooty's cousin and he doesn't speak either <laughs> yeah but so we had yeah. this whole conversation and but it was because like because the names of high spears are just amazing and we were talking about how that happens and it's like well it always comes from a story so i was like oh well you know we saw this meme and we thought this would be a really <laughs> funny name and we were talking about you know because it's like medieval art and this guy's like a bagel oh, and like <laughs> when the beer's so lit you become a bagel and they were like yeah Done. meanwhile i like handed down. my phone over to joe <laughs> and i like pulled up the list of all the names like i had a donnie darko reference on there like because i went how funny would it be if we just called it i'm doubting your commitment to sparkle motion with no explanation just literally that okay. anyone that's watched donnie darko will know those if you don't that's what i think is amazing is if you haven't watched it and you have no idea what that is and you just pull up and you're like what is that no idea so I just hand my phone over to Joe not thinking and then I hear them in between like meetings talk about beer so lit you turn into a bagel and I was like oh no what have I done my my camera was on my camera was off and I went on mute and I was like I'm so sorry (laughs) it's the best it totally fits in with the naming conventions yes sincere apologies Rachel because you had (laughs) zero say we had so many names that we discussed together that made so much more sense and then we ended up with a meme (laughs) so 
I love it. So funny. I went back into work and I was like, what did you end up naming? Like, what what happened? And they were like, oh, when the beer's so lit, you turn into a bagel. And I was like, uh, I, I, we're going to have to catch up on this one because bagels, peanut butter. But you can put peanut butter and jelly on a bagel. Just justification was you can put peanut butter and jelly on a bagel. So it makes sense. And then they were like, I think we can use like because it's on tap only. I think we could probably get away with like printing out the actual artwork. <laughs> and I was like, even better Amazing. getting yes. <laughs> so absolutely love that. But um, I really want to try it. Can we Let's try open it? it. Yeah, I think I feel like. So this is we kegged it. I kegged it on Monday. I want to okay. say when did I message you guys and say I'm kegging? I think it was Monday. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they cleaned the lines. And I was like, I've got a beer for you to put on straight away. They put it on and I canned it uh, there and then. Uh, but yeah, it might be a bit fizzy when you open, is my point. All right. <laughs> we'll, fu- we'll find out. Yep. Okay. I'm getting my glass ready. It's a high Oh my glass. God. Yeah. Ooh. It smells amazing. Oh, okay, okay, like okay. Stout glass. I'm not using the appropriate glassware, but I just really like your glasses. So. <laughs> Oh no, it feels like the appropriate amount of liveliness. It's just oh that initial. God. It smells so good. <gasps> oh, it smells like a peanut butter <laughs> and jelly sandwich. <laughs> peanut butter and jelly. Ah, oh my God, cheers. <laughs> it literally smells like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Oh, it does. I don't. It's nailed it where it's like the initial thing, like the initial smell that hits you. It doesn't. I know we. I know it's not great that we used by any means but it lands in the same way as like an american peanut butter and jelly sandwich which i wasn't expecting it to have that type of like grape jelly smell to it and i'm really happy with it but then it's like the peanut it does smell like peanut butter which i feel like a lot of times when you get a peanut butter and jelly beer it doesn't smell like peanut butter it's nutty but it's not peanut butter and this is like 100 percent peanut butter all right i'm going in i'm going in Oh, I'm so nervous. I've already been in. It's amazing. Oh, I really like it. There's su- it's got such a lovely, but even though it's a porter, it's still got a really lovely body yeah. to it. And there's like a creaminess to it. And a very like nutty finish. Like nutty the finish and is like very nutty. Tart fruitiness in the middle. And then that nutty. Oh, I'm so pleased with it. It's so good. You're nervous. Like, I was nervous as well. Cause I was like, shit, what if we really <laughs> like, this is like, this is your bro. I was like, what if we <laughs> made a mistake here? <laughs> and then it's our fault. Like, we've done it wrong. No, this is really, oh my God, this is really nice. And I'm, I'm super excited because it's my porter based recipe that we mm. use. Yes. So, so yeah, um, I'm going to explain a little bit about how yeah. I scaled because it's pretty background. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, obviously, I said to Joe, you've got a base porter recipe. It'd be really cool to use that uh, in some way yeah this is what I use so uh, took that use my excel sheet which is just my little baby that I've made uh, efficiencies all the all the good nerdy stuff um, <laughs> essentially took the percentages of the grain that you use mm-hmm. popped the percentages into my excel sheet uh, and that gave me a, a better idea of how to scale than just go oh times it by 10 then right and hope for the best um we did we hit a little bit below what we aimed for. I think we were aiming for 5% and we've got 4%. Um, but I, it, the way it drinks is incredible. I was really. going to say, there's nothing wrong with that. I was like, wow. <laughs> like, yeah, the mouthfeel on this is amazing. It's, it's pretty, yeah, it is pretty full compared to like, when you see 4%, like I wouldn't expect it to be like as full as it is. Like I'd expect it to be a bit thinner mm. and it's just not like it, it feels like it hasn't, lost any mouthfeel <laughs> yeah. yeah we find um when we, we add like raspberry so we added 60 kilos of raspberry um it it reduces the amount of fermentable sugars it reduces the the starting gravity okay so then we get a less alcoholic product but without thinning it out yeah. I suppose is, is a way to say it so um yeah and we use torrified oats which makes a huge difference any breweries out there you can credit me for like <laughs> thinking it up your bit if I tell you to use torrified oats but yeah it works wonders for us it's a pro tip 
I, I think it was just like so it was really impressive to be like part of the whole process as well because we we genuinely and I think I can speak for Joe and I both on this like we were really grateful actually that you like a you invited us to do this and b that you allowed us to be part of like the whole thing like you and and heist as a as a whole it was really cool to be able to be like cool we're going to come up with what we're actually brewing we're going to come up with the recipe for what we're brewing we you know we had input into every bit which was just a lot of people I think can turn up and they can do a collab with somebody and and just be like okay that's what we're brewing cool of of do it happy days you know I'll help you out I'll help brew um, but it was just so cool to be able to be part of the whole journey of it because you know like I said we had that initial meeting and then between the 14th of September and when we actually went up you had said like oh I've got the grain bill like sorted oh look at this look at that and it was like sending screenshots and you were like oh just just tell me if I'm like sending too much <laughs> and I'm spamming you and we were like no this is send so cool all. like definitely send it um and that was just like such a cool experience and then obviously I think one thing that's worth addressing as well is we didn't use real nuts in this yeah 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 um so uh, we always knew we wanted to use uh, a flavoring for the peanut just because the the allergens are Oh, we want to. We always want to make our beer as accessible as possible um, to as many people as possible, and allergens just prevent that happening. Um, combined with like the risk as well. So if we use actual peanuts in our brew kit, we've then contaminated all future beer, and then any beer that any uh, pub or bar that buy our beer, when they pour that beer through the lines, they've then contaminated that line with peanuts. So until they replace that line, they've got peanut, may contain peanut allergy on all the beers that go through that line. Yeah, as much as possible, we try and use, yeah, natural ingredients yeah. we can. Um, and obviously this is synthesized in some way, so it's just a, a flavoring, um, but it means there's no risk of allergy, mm. so. I think we sort of knew from the start, like when we discussed and we were like, oh, peanut butter and yeah. water, but like right from the start, we were like, but we don't want to use real nuts. Yeah. We want it to be inclusive. We don't want anybody to feel they can't drink it if they want to because there's actual nuts in it and I think a lot of times you see a lot of people on like forums and stuff say I really wish breweries would stop using actual peanuts to make yeah. beers because I now can't enjoy it or my it's partner's risk my partner's yeah. severely allergic and so me having it impacts them and we just knew we wanted to be inclusive and I think you know you went and you did like a whole bunch of research into what the best flavoring to use was yeah. and everything there was so much research and consideration that I even just went into that alone that I'm like so impressed that you went away and you were like cool okay I can use this 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 or this this seems to be the best one like how do you go about doing that is that just connecting with other breweries is that you know doing a google yeah there was a lot of uh speaking to other breweries so, so I spoke to Dan one of the owners um about peanut butter asked him advice uh he said he knew someone at Beer Inc who'd done their star beer oh that's a good beer yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so he asked them what they used um uh, turned out they used a specific flavoring I think so we just took their advice uh and did our own little experiment dosed <laughs> we poured out a plain porter uh, and dosed it with peanut flavoring as a like trial run we're like hmm, yes yeah. this is a, a reasonable amount to use uh, and then when we came to had it in the tank put in the amount we thought we were going to use and i tasted it with my covid taste buds and was like no more <laughs> <laughs> scott and chris looked at me like i think four and i was like mm -hmm, more mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so yeah we got some more but they're like, are you the sure? <laughs> like, are you sure about this? And you're like, yes, a hundred percent more. Yeah. <laughs> I've done that as well. Yeah. Like, I, I did a with with this base recipe. I did a, a coffee and hazelnut porter, and I'd looked at various different recipes, and I was like, right, about forty drops of hazelnut flavouring, um, and I put forty drops in, and then I tasted it, and I was like, nah, <laughs> no, nah, I ended up going up to seventy drops of this hazelnut flavouring in it. And it was it was right. Like yeah. you don't realise how much actually you do need in it. I feel like that's I think it's... With cinnamon. Every time someone makes a <laughs> well, pumpkin spice, like doing. fifty percent of the time, I'm like pumpkin <laughs> spice beers, and then they're like, "We just put a bit in." I'm like, "Now double it." Like that's what you need. Now double it. Your pumpkin spice beer was very good. Yeah. <laughs> very yeah. Yours very was good. amazing. <laughs> yours was amazing. So yeah, do double the amount in this one, um, and then when it came out, we we're like, because it we. 
were dosing it when it was at 14 degrees. Typically you're drinking at maybe like five to, to 10 degrees. So we're like, yeah, we can taste it. Knowing that like it's, it might be a bit much, but knowing that when you drink it cooler, it's going to yeah. be, uh, you're going to have to search for the flavor a little bit more when it's colder. So that's what we did. <laughs> that's a good um, test. Yeah. But obviously yeah, like- as we went in uh, during fermentation, so there's no uh, unfermented sugars left in there and popping cans everywhere, even though we we, we, we kegged it all anyway. But, yeah. well, I was going to say, yeah, if anyone wants to try it, it's it's, it's um, at your brewery. Yeah, I was going to say tap room, room, but it's your... It's your a brewery slash brewery. tap room. Yeah. Yeah. The space is absolutely phenomenal. <clears throat> so I walked, like, the second we walked in in the morning, um, I, like, I looked at the space and I was like, yep, yeah, this is definitely my type of place. Like, it's the type of place I would hang out. Um, it's very... I was trying to describe it to people as well and it's very you have this sort of feel where it is kind of that high ceiling industrial feel but it's very warm and welcoming and cozy um and it doesn't and and what I find with industrial spaces is they tend to feel like really masculine but this doesn't feel I'm not saying it's like oh it's very feminine but it's not yeah. very ma- it's very neutral like it's it was just such an amazing space and you've got like two whole sides to it you've got like the side which is the side where you actually brew on and there's a bar there and you've got um the donut place that's there as yes. well yes yeah yeah uh wasn't open properly with donuts there was no. coffee so gutted because I was like I was looking up places to get donuts and that was one of the places recommended but it's like oh it's yeah. not open yet and I was like no didn't realize it was at heist <laughs> yeah, yeah. We walked in and I was like that's the donut place really love their <laughs> logo as well love your logo love their their logo and I understand that is that is owned by the same people that own heist yeah, yeah. what was it I can't remember the name of it uh, ritual the ritual yes um, ritual I was gonna say I couldn't I can remember the logo but I couldn't remember the name but like that was really cool so like that's on one side in like a little mini shipping container situation which is really cool way to sort of like define it as its own space but have it out in the open um yeah. inside the basically the, the whole area which was really cool and then there was like this whole second side of of the bar which was definitely more of like an open bar there was like um the coin pusher machines there was the um claw machine there was uh gotcha machines where you just get like a mystery label outfit um it was really cool a little arcade machine in the back I was like yeah. this is so cool it's 100 percent my space and the amount of tap lines you guys had on so I don't I don't envy the person that has to clean <laughs> yeah. it first of all but as a customer I was like this is amazing. You had so many beers. so much to choose from. <laughs> I was genuinely like, we only have a limited time here before we have to go. <laughs> I have to prioritize what I'm gonna drink. There's too much option. Never even made it to the guest beers because exactly. you had like 15 or something lines on of just yeah. ice. Yeah, yeah. I think we managed our target for like we started like the new brew team started brewing in July. Uh, and since July, we've been like, right, we need 15 lines of heist beer. But we kept, oh, we've sold out of this one. We've sold out of that one. We're like, ah, we need those ones to make up our 15. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's only only in October did we fill 15 lines of heist beer. And that was like a big win for the brew team. <laughs> we're like, yes, we've done it. <laughs> well, that's it as well. And then like when we were there, they were telling us how like your Kolsch kept, literally like kept going out and like you couldn't get the keg with the keg issue that's happened at the moment like you couldn't re-keg it fast enough because people loved like we we tried a bit of it and it was like yeah, it is really it. nice like i don't normally so like high. a kolsch but that was really i don't lovely. like lagers I do. no don't look kolsch is like lager it's not a kolsch is done with an l use uh, with a lager you say l temperatures like i i yeah, yeah. there's something sweet about it that's that i just yeah. i keep trying different <laughs> ones but I, I was like, oh, yeah, I'll try it. And I was like, oh, I like this one. Yeah, yeah it's a good it's one. It's a like, cult favourite with a bar yeah. staff. I love the Kolsch. They are petitioning for a Turbo Kolsch for Christmas. Oh. So, oh. As a Christmas gift to the bar staff, please make us Turbo Kolsch. <laughs> I like to get anything else. <laughs> Nothing else. Just, just Turbo Kolsch, please. <laughs> but yeah, like that was important. And I didn't even mention that there's like an amazing 
burger and chip place that's like inside oh there as well. God. Slap slap and pickles. That the was called cool. yeah. the names. The, the, <laughs> the name made me laugh when we rocked up. I was like, ha, that's funny. <laughs> and then I got the loaded chips. I got yep. the chicken Kiev ones. Yeah. Um, with flaming like flaming dip on it or something like that. Yeah. And it made me think of what I love from KFC, which is like the flaming mayonnaise. Yeah. And it was so good. I was so full. All I had was this plate of loaded chips. And I was just like, I was like, I can crush that. And then by the end of it, I was like, oh, I'm so it was so, it was so good. And now I've been craving fried chicken loaded chips. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's amazing. Just, I, I, I've got to explain these chips because they are amazing. <laughs> right. So, so they're shaped so that they're a scoop. So you get your loaded chips and then you can load them actually up rather than just falls sitting out. on the top and falling off. Nothing falls it's out. It's a scoopy <laughs> chip. Like I've never seen a scoopy chip before. They are so clever and they are so delicious. We did get them and we were like, oh, <laughs> scoopy <laughs> chips. Like, this chip. is innovation. Like what is happening? <laughs> like, mate, just yeah. madness. And it was, it was the best like lunch break ever I was yeah. like this is so good uh, but yeah like to start the day just to quickly like go through that whole situation like so to start the day I was working the first half of the day so Joe, you did the first lot of stuff yeah didn't you? so we did the mashing in um I need a step because <laughs> I'm a little bit too short for your mash tan but I quite like the size of your mash tan like it's a nice it was a nice yeah, size like you can size. get you can get right in there. There's the lovely little window so you can look we'll at the photo. I love the window. Well. We'll put a photo somewhere. <laughs> yeah, somewhere here or there. So there's, yeah, you just got a lovely little view while you're, while you're mashing in. That was lovely. We did get Tori to come over and mash in eventually. She yeah, so I was, I was like, oh, than me. in between, I was on back-to-back call. So I was like, all right, I'm in between calls right now. So I was like, I'll just get up. I'll just move my legs a bit so I'm not sitting down constantly. And uh, went over and they're like, here, stow this for a bit. Joe was like, okay. <laughs> so then I was just I was like, oh, all right, it's actually fine for me. Uh, and then, yeah, I left and Joe was like, <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> like oh, she was on her tiptoes at one yeah. point. And I was like, oh. yeah. I was the exact yeah. right height for it, which is. Yeah, I'm just not quite. If I, I've just been a little bit taller. I can get like, because you've got to get right to the bottom. You need to yeah. give that a really good stir, make sure all of your grains are getting all the water to them. So you've got to get all the way to the bottom. Ma, I'm just not quite tall enough. <laughs> and then, yeah, I went back, finished my calls, did all that, came back. And then I think I came back just in time to start. Well, no, it was all um, the spa gin is when I came back, wasn't mm-hmm. it? And we had, yes. I've been pitching for this idea of brewery ASMR because some of the stuff that I've seen <laughs> happen, it was like so good. It's when the you little see weird the squeak of the, of the spa. <laughs> yeah, well, like, the the comforting of like when you see it go up when it's going through like oh, okay, the circulation yeah, yeah. and then the levels drop in the I I don't know like the technical names for those so anyone that's listening is pro- and not watching my hand gestures is probably like, what the what the fuck are you doing when you're doing your spot on your kit like what is that box called the that it- the, un- the underbar <laughs> There we go. So if anyone's listening that looked from Google what an underback is, basically like a box. It's got sort of like there's like almost kind of two sides to that. Yeah. Box. So it's um it's a yeah, an open top box uh with a a sieve plate yeah, in the middle. Like filter. Then, yeah, when it, when the the work comes out, it filters out any big chunks of, of grain that have fallen through the, the false bottom of the mash tub. But it's brilliant because the water level like the the levels rise and then they go back down again and then they rise they go back and i was like this would make amazing brewery smr it's like you like, can make some videos out the lid and watching like the, the spa jam go round yeah. and round. she's like oh like, i love amazing. the patterns it makes in the grain yeah it's like crop That's circles. What I'm saying. Yeah. it's it's not even it's like visual asmr i'm like saying people will watch these youtube videos and i don't think anyone's doing it yet i gave that <laughs> idea to you guys first if you don't choose to use it this episode's coming out so if someone else is going to use it then they're going to use it and that's all i can do i've done what i can do so yeah i was in time to watch sort of like the, the spartan happen and then and then we got to dig out the mash time which i was the one that had to do the shoveling because I was yeah. the one that worked in the morning, so I didn't get to do really <laughs> and that's anything. That's literally the point. When you go, <laughs> when you go and do a club somewhere, if you're the visitor, you've got to clean out the mash tun. Then the Joe's rules. like, Joe's like, I held the bag. <laughs> I, um, like, I also I dragged the full bags. 
across the dragging, the room. The dragging is yeah. hard because yes. how do you keep Thank a straight you. back when you're right, dragging? You can't. You can't. <laughs> and you got and it's a little bit damp. So you've got to kind of like... wind it over and get it like because yeah. it's a, the bag is a bit slippery. You got to kind of wiggle it. Yeah, it's not like. <laughs> don't think that I had the this easy job. Well. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I dug it out. I'm Joe's like, I held the bag. <laughs> I moved the bags dragged, across the brewery floor. Thank you very much. It wasn't I moved the bags. It was you were like, I held the bag. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact that you also moved the bags. And then I spilled a whole bunch of it in my shoe. And I was like, yeah. That's very oh, no. <laughs> and then I was like, but it's actually nice. It's a nice it's warm. I say this. I said this. <laughs> I said this to a journalist who came in to like interview us and he was like, oh, what's like the biggest, like, I can't remember what you're saying, but, like the biggest misconception about being, I was like, um, like, it seems glamorous, but really it's just like wet feet and cleaning. Yeah. And he that's what brewing like, is. What? I was like, yep, yeah, wet feet and cleaning. Yeah. That's, I think that's like spot on to be fair. Yeah. 100% <laughs> of brewing is cleaning people like, yeah. Yeah. don't be fooled so much cleaning just, chemicals just and cleaning that. yeah we got to do all that and then we like got to dump the hot we got to climb yeah, the ladder hops to in. dump the hops in that was yeah. exciting yeah. we got to sample things in the tank that was extra exciting yeah, that was tank beer is the best beer. tank beer is great yeah that uh what was it the um gooseberry was it a oh was that in tank yeah, yeah. The, it was yeah. gooseberry sour so nice gooseberry lap, sour. clean fermented yeah it was it was sour. it was clean definitely a nice clean taste a nice refreshing taste it was like just so nice i was it's like really what well, i was on i was on a call when when joe had it and she came over and she was like so, i'm just gonna be quietly slid <laughs> like, that <laughs> in um, like you're going to want one of these I was talking yeah. to Scott about it because normally I find that um, gooseberry can be very tart, and actually yeah. it's really this fruity. Yeah, it's really lovely. So we we have like a kind of series um, of sort of below ice base sours. Um, so it's nice, sort of below four percent sour, a bit of, bit of wheat in there, uh, and then nice put fruit in and ferment the fruit out. So our first one we did was a raspberry one, which was delicious. Loved it. Um, and then we've just sort of gone through different fruits. And the latest one is the gooseberry one um, that you guys tried. Um, it's beautiful. Really good. Yeah. I was going to say really Berliner Weiss. I was like, I feel yeah. like I, yeah, I feel yeah. like it's Berliner And I was like, oh, I don't know. And then, and then like, I was oh, going to say it because like, you right. didn't say it. I was like, am I wrong? Am I misremembering? I was like, yeah, well, no. I, no. I was yeah. like, I think I misremembered yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Always right. Imposter syndrome. Get right. Me. Hello. It, it was sitting out the door. It was more that I was like, oh did i remember that correctly or was like did i just have too many beers i, I mean we did drink a lot of beer in sheffield <laughs> we did drink a lot of, we were only there for like a fly-in visit there was more places to go than we had time yeah, to drink we, get to go um, everywhere. we tried to go as many places as we could in the limited time we had um had we went to a place where we had i had all the virgins on tap when they did the series i was going in yeah yeah it was they, they all looked the same <laughs> They tasted slightly different. They tasted slightly different. They did taste different. But like when I got them, I was like, they all look the same. (laughs) We literally were like, this is the Simcoe. This is the Azaka. No, wait, that one's the Nelson. (laughs) And that one's the Idaho 7. We were like, hold it in the right order. Don't don't, don't put it down. You know which one's in which hand. Like, yeah, uh, that's not a slight at all. Because like they did taste different, but it was the like when well, we got them, and it's that whole thing about Broda where it's like all the dippers are the same dipper. And then I was like, oh no, I was like, they all look the same. I was like, they all gonna taste the same. It's like, no, they didn't. It's fine. <laughs> they were different. They were different. But yeah, no, it was um there's a lot of amazing places. Like yeah. more people should be talking about it. And I just I feel bad. Like I wish we actually stayed. It was difficult because I wish we stayed longer at Heist because you guys had so much stuff. I know. On. We'd we'd said we <laughs> were gonna so come much back. To explore as well. Yeah. yeah. We said we were going to come back. We were like, yeah, we'll probably circle back round. We didn't. <laughs> we, we just didn't. We didn't get a chance to. We didn't get. Yeah, well, yeah. I think that's also, we didn't leave there till later than we thought yeah. we were going to leave there. So we thought like, oh, we'll leave a bit earlier than we'll have dinner at this time. But we ended up having dinner a lot later. So by the time it got round to that point, we we're like, oh, I think they're closed now. <laughs> so yeah. we just didn't get a chance. But yeah, it was like, it was just such a cool experience. And I feel like everything about your location was very 
much me and uh I'm, like I really want to go back and I was saying to my husband like, oh, I like, want to go back so that he can see it because I was like I think you'd really like the location like I think you'd like the spot and you'd like the beers that were on and everything I've just got oh, we didn't get to stay longer I've got we didn't get to meet you because well I, I know you, you'll right? just have to come back and yeah, yeah, just have to do it again <laughs> yeah just exactly have to do it again round two submit beer ideas now <laughs> Yeah, yeah. If you've got if you've got something like crazy wild that you want us to name, not after a meme this time. <laughs> I think we should still name it after a meme. Like, why not? Um, compared to like a normal brew day, then, like what, like what is a normal non collaboration brew day look like for you? So we normally come in look a little bit grumpier than on a collab day. Get some coffee. <laughs> um. You guys make excellent coffee as well. Yeah. yeah. The ritual coffee keeps us in like good caffeinated supply. <laughs> um, then we're mashing sort of, uh, it's a very manual mashing in process. We don't have an, al- an auger, a hydrator. We just pour bags in uh, and put hot water in as well and stir it. Then we leave, leave it for the same amount of time. So we leave an hour and 15. Then sparge. It's, it's very much the same process, just more, um, when on a collab day, you get more interaction. So you're talking to people, talking about what you're doing, explaining what you're doing. So I always find when you explain something to someone, you you learn more about it than you thought you knew anyway, because yeah, you, you're thinking more. Um, so, I, yeah, I really missed out on chatting to you guys about why. Why are we doing this? <laughs> I, yeah. I imagine you were just like, why? <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't, really needed. I don't think we needed to actually because Scott was really like okay now we're gonna do this and yeah, that's how we, we do that and, and he's like how do you do that because he knew that I home brewed and I was like oh, oh yeah, yeah well you know I use two tiny pots <laughs> <laughs> it, it was very much like yeah he, he was so good at being yeah. like it, we didn't as Joseph we didn't really ha- have the chance to sort of say not in a bad way we didn't necessarily get to that point where we were saying oh and what is this for why do you do that because he was very much like okay and the next step's going to be this um we do it like this like do you know like do you know yeah, what this really is good. have you experienced this before you know if you have and it wasn't in a condescending way it was very much like a oh have you okay you have it well this is why sort of thing like yeah. he didn't assume we didn't but then he also didn't say well, in case you already know I won't say anything he was very good at being like okay let's double check and then I'll explain things to you and it was just like I didn't feel like I was being you know top down to at all or like anything like that it was just such a it was just a really nice experience I feel like I learned quite a lot but I imagine as well like when you've got a collaboration with somebody like you just had um Damien from Emperors there yeah I imagine like obviously he knows how to brew beer but I imagine that even when you collab you probably still have questions for each other and and learning from each other isn't it yeah, there's less drinking on a normal day. I will say that. We don't get to <laughs> time and go like, oh, 12 o'clock, time to clock. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we tend to go the whole day without a beer. Yeah. Yeah, I, saw, I saw photos of picklebacks coming yeah, out. That, oh, <laughs> I was home it? by then. That is, <laughs> I if didn't stay for the there, <laughs> You've got to have whiskey and wort. Uh, whiskey yeah, and wort I did have whiskey point. and wort. You did whiskey yeah. and wort. Yeah. That was tasty. Can <laughs> recommend. Recommend that one. Five stars yeah if you on a regular brew day if you haven't got to be there like is that do you have opportunity like okay right so you know mash is going i'm now going to go over and you know can something or sort something out like do you kind of schedule your day like that a bit more so there's other stuff that gets done yeah well we'll kind of like whack a mash on and then oh clean the tank down get that ready to go um pack keg uh, we we don't have a can in are on site at the minute we use right. canners so uh, they come in and, and do it on site um but yeah we won't brew when we can okay it, it takes too long um we yeah don't have to I was gonna say do you have to be like quite strategic about yeah. that then like so you've got to be like we need to brew this day okay this is a day that we're not brewing so do, I'm assuming obviously yeah. you're not brewing seven days a week or anything like no. that I mean you might be going in and doing like oh we put the raspberries in at this point like mm. we did with ours but it's not like seven days we're starting a beer from scratch sort of thing yeah. so do you just strategically go okay actually we've got a gap this day this is the best day yeah. to do can in yeah we more plan so we get the canning canning scheduled and then plan the brews around the canning okay um but- assuming you try to maximize how many you can sort of can when you have the yeah. amount to can, isn't it? 
Fair. Yeah, so you get get the cannon scheduled, and then we're like, right, fill the tanks, <laughs> fill the tanks ready for cannon, and so then we have a tense bit where we're like, hopefully, hopefully it's all ready, hopefully it's all happy, yeah. good, to, good, good to get signed <laughs> off, um, before the before the cannon guys come, and yeah, so far, it's it's all gone really well, um, yeah, in yeah. terms of cannon. We're going to knock on some wood here for you. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Don't that. As I was saying that, I was like, I don't want to yeah, say this. It was, it was, it was <laughs> as you said it, you're like, so far it's ah. been good. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one thing that we we, we recorded um, an episode about, like, uh, just brewing overall because I'd done a home brew with Joe and then obviously coming and doing the brew with you guys. Like, that was just, it was obviously two experiences. I was... It's the only, it's the first and only so far times I've brewed two times, two very different times. Um, I mean, it's more or less the same, but like what I found was like there is a lot more waiting because I feel like with the sparge, like you're sort of watched it there. You're not physically doing the, you know, with Joe, like pots and pans type thing where you're actually involved. So there is more downtime. So like it is interesting to be like, oh, how, how do you, how do you handle that downtime sort of thing? And it's uh, like, how many times in a normal work day when you're not doing a collaboration brew would you just be like oh, i'm just gonna go have a beer do you do that at all when it's when no one's there or you're just like nah, i can't really no. be bothered to have no. a beer. it's just me it, tend, it tends to be coffee <laughs> um or just getting things ready so uh, at the minute we're also we do the sales and logistics side so we'll get an order come in and we've got to get a pallet ready or uh, Dan and Adam will be like, oh, we've got this beer festival. Can you get these kegs ready? Um, so we do a lot of kind of like uh, admin stuff as well. So we do all this stock coming in, stock going out, uh, stock to the bar, stock to, uh, we use Ebria to sell a lot of beer. So check in that if any orders have come in there. Um, so there's a lot of like, oh, I've got five minutes. I'll just go and check on that, um, see what that's doing. So there's downtime, but also time to do useful things um and not much time for beer until the end of the day so I feel like that's quite interesting to say because I feel like a lot of people's idea of like oh I want to get into it like I think people don't realize like how much actually goes on behind the scenes per se and especially like the smaller you the smaller scale you are you know I mean you guys obviously have like quite a few tanks like that but the smaller you are the smaller your equipment is the more the you know the more you have to wear different hats maybe compared to somebody yeah. that is scaled up even bigger than you guys are because when you have so many people there's only so many people to wear the hats sort of thing and I think people don't think about it they just think oh like you said when a journalist said oh what's the you know what's the thing you're like yeah, it's, it's really just a lot of like wet feet and cleaning I think people <laughs> yeah. don't really think about that they just think like oh if you if you're brewing you're having a beer while you're brewing like all the yeah. time and especially when you've got access to 30 lines that are you know 10 feet away from you that that temptation <laughs> I feel like I would think that I would have a lot more beer than I would but I would just yeah. be like oh my god so much of it. <laughs> Well, it's like a very physical job like mm. you can't be you know half cut trying to no chuck the hops in as well and... up a ladder putting hops into a I can't really even imagine container like it's you know that would be a health and safety nightmare yeah yeah absolutely um some of the names obviously joe mentioned some of the names were amazing i thought maybe you might be able to give us if i if i look at some of the ones that are on your uh <laughs> on your, on your yeah. page now <laughs> if you can explain <laughs> where the names came from so actually the one that really made me laugh when we were there was the one that's like is that a giant weetabix yeah and i was like yeah. I was like, where's that come from? Um, <laughs> and what I know about that is they said that there was the big bags of like grains that were up on the top, but they're the way that they're packaged made them look like a gigantic Weetabix. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was like, that's absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Um, Joe mentioned a few of them at the start, but then I'm looking on the website now and I really want to know, like, don't let me die. Where did like... Oh, that's a story. So... Uh, Dan and Adam opened their sort of origin story is they opened up a bar in Clown uh, and then they took their kind of well organised a trip with their regulars to go away um, what this the Don't Let Me Die beer is a book fast infused porter 
brewed with Doc's uh, beers in Grimsby. Uh, so they took like their regulars away, and one of the guys there, he got just so drunk on book fast and rang them at like four in the morning, like wandered away, did his own thing, rang them at like four in the morning, just in the snow, freezing cold. Oh, it's really cold. Oh, I don't know what to do. Um, oh, don't let me die. Don't let me die. So I, he knows that it's named after him. It's right. <laughs> well, I mean, I would hazard a guess it's that. Anything. It's like, a, oh, we named a bear after you, <laughs> thinking you were going to die in the snow. He, he's like walked in. <laughs> he's like walked in. He's like, oh, that sounds a bit familiar. <laughs> oh, where'd you get that one from? Oh, <laughs> that is. That's amazing. Like, oh my god, that was that was dark. That was Yeah, yeah, it got dark right. I was like, oh. pick the dark one. <laughs> it's, only, it's only because I, I had that um I had that on tap last Friday um at my one of my local shops they had it on they had um that and they had the rye on they had yeah. the can't find a good car boot these days and I got one of each and I was thinking about and I have a can of the don't let me die as well I bought a can of that when, when we went up um and I was just like I wonder what that's named for I was like oh so I had to ask and then the the can't find a good car boot then as I've said I've had that one what what's that one named for it's just Andy, um, one of the guys in the tap room, he was just like, we're talking about what we do on the weekends. And he's like, during lockdown, I, I tried to find charity shops, tried to find car boots. And you, you just can't find a good car boot. And he was just like, right, you've just named a beer then. Beer. Yeah. A lot of things is just pe- things people say and we go, you just named a beer. Like, <laughs> that's the prize you get for saying something weird. <laughs> so, then there's, um, there's too many Adams. Yeah, so that was a brew collaboration brew with Old Street Brewery. Um, and so there was Adam is one of the owners. So he went down and then I, I believe there's two other Adams who work at Old Street. So they were saying Adam and the wrong one was responding. So there are too many, <laughs> too many Adams. I love when that happens. Like when you've got in the workplace, you'll have like so many people with the same name, but then you'll be like, oh, I was talking to this, but then they were like, which one? Like that is yeah. so good. We've got, we've got um, two Jakes at my office, but their, their surnames both start with a B. So we'll be like, <laughs> oh, Jake. And then like, so we've, they've started calling Jake A and Jake B just because they thought no, it was no. funny because you'd be like Jake B and everyone would go, which Jake B is it? And then they're like, oh, so now they've switched and it's new Jake and old Jake, but it's just, yeah, it's so good. And I, I'm always like, one of you's going to have to go home and change that. So oh, I can't have that. Um, I, I really want to know as well, ignore the cat and hard hat. And this is quite funny. So we were doing some uh, like promo shots of the beer um, for like social media and stuff. Uh, Chris forwarded them on to... To Adam to like post <laughs> accidentally selected like a meme of a cat in a hat <laughs> <laughs> then had to follow up like ignore the cat in the hard hat I just want to send the beer promo shots <laughs> see memes name beer memes name beer memes definitely name beers um <laughs> that is brilliant all right um, last one last one invert cake day uh, invert cake daily yes yeah so this is my my little baby so uh, brewed a Nipa, which is the first time I've brewed a Nipa, and um, I think it's great. <laughs> so I sent you guys some. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I've I'm got so it in the fridge, um, and I'm definitely going to try that because I'm going to try it tonight. Because I've, I've made the excuse of like, oh, well, I've got to drink them soon because they're crowlers. So it says ASAP. <laughs> it says ASAP. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it, it says, says ASAP. Right on ASAP. Right there. <laughs> like, I, right yes, there. I have to. It's just the <laughs> burden that I, I have to yeah. bear, I guess. But yeah, how, how did you actually get the name for that one? Um, on a lot of sort of hazy beers, they like sounds like the name of the beer the ingredients and then it says invert keg daily on on the keg so that the bar staff is supposed to give give it a, a chuck around i don't know but it's just on like 50 liter kegs and stuff how are you, oh, gonna, how are you gonna do how that you gonna daily walk down to the cellar and just chuck a 50 liter keg around like i don't <laughs> like doing that a bar staff isn't gonna like doing that <laughs> i just thought it'd be funny to name like a hazy beer invert keg daily because it's so often on the badge anyway it'd be really good yeah. if someone sees that and they're like they don't think that's the name they just think yeah. you're like really aggressively trying to get we did have one of your beers as well when we were there mm. which was your white stout mm. what one was that called uh it was supposed to be pink bro 
Do you want to explain oh, Rihanna, why? It was supposed to be pink. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely loved the name. I loved it. I thought it was so great. Like, what was your? Cause I know you were saying like a lot of people you felt like maybe just didn't get it because they don't get white stouts. We had it. And I thought it was absolutely just amazing. Um, what? How did you come up with that? Like, how did you come up with being like, yeah, I'm going to make like this strawberry white stout? I'm just quite a sarcastic person. <laughs> gather from the invert cake daily thing um <laughs> I just was like I want to mess with people if I can brew a, a, like something pale that tastes tastes like a stout I'm gonna do it um so I talked to Scott because he's got a lot more experience than me and I was like I want to do this this is what I'm thinking um here's a kind of recipe draft and he was like crack in see what happens <laughs> uh and I said to him I want it to be pink though because I'm I'm a woman and I'm making a beer and I want it. To I be- want it to be pink. <laughs> you know, you didn't even because have to give a reason. You I, like, I, I want it to be pink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why? Because I want it. Because to be I want it. <laughs> um, so he's like, right, you've got enough strawberry in there. It should be pink. And I was like, yeah, I've got enough strawberry in there. It should be pink. Um, and when we put it in the fermenter, it was so pink. I was like, yes, this is gonna be a pink style. I have made it. Like. <laughs> It's going to be so good. People are going to be, I'm going to be blowing minds. They're going to drink a pink beer and think it's going to be like a sour. And, it's going to be <laughs> sour. Um, and it it just fermented out. The colour fermented out. Oh. It felt pale as anything. When you poured it, were you like, no! <laughs> <laughs> we tried it on the final day. I was like, it, it, it didn't get its pink back. <laughs> oh. um, <laughs> Did you go and be like, I don't even want to sip it now? I don't even know. Yeah, it. like, it's a disappointment <laughs> to me. <laughs> it was so it was so good. Do you it think tastes really try, good. Think yeah, I love the taste of it. Yeah. The colour of it. Like, do you think yeah. you would do anything again to try to do like a bright, vibrant coloured beer I to see if you could nail it? R- we've like, like we've seen. <laughs> yeah, we've seen that raspberry holds its colour. Yeah. But it gives it that tartness, and I didn't want it to be tart. I wanted it to be sweet. Uh, like almost almost sickly sweet mm. um and I I achieved that bit it just didn't stay pink so yeah I'm pleased with it <laughs> I'm just like the beer. way the way you were like yes it's pink going in like this is so good just yeah. you saying that and then the visual I get from when you pour when you pour it out and it's how you're like I don't even want this <laughs> get this away from me get this vile drink away from me it was very lovely and uh, that was another one of the crowds that you set up and I'm very excited to drink that one as well because uh, that was the I think that was actually the first beer that I got uh, when they were like hey do you want to do you want to try anything I was like yes I would and then yeah. they were like which one do I was like I want Rachel's <laughs> even before the pumpkin and then I realised yeah. like, oh, oh I forgot you had pumpkin <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we so had that one before we had the pumpkin. That. It was really, really good. Um, yeah, very exciting. It, what types of other stuff like do you want to play around? Like, what kind of flavors do you think could be fun to play around with? I like. So there's a lot at the minute. There's a lot of focus on hops and making everything about hops. And I, I love playing with malt. Like you can that build a grain really bill. Yeah, you can build a grain bill, and it does so many different things. Um, I think that's really interesting. I, I love playing with hops as well because that's you get a big like punch of flavor and it's incredible the, the hop products that we've got now as well it's insane the amount you can achieve it, there's so there's so much more creativity in beer now than I think there's ever been before uh, and that's the biggest thing for me is that I'm combining like a bit of like crazy maths science stuff with being creative and and being able to pitch ideas where I'm like, I think I want to make something like this. And they're like, oh, we know someone who did something similar. So this is the advice we've got for you. And then see what happens. Um, and now we've got our pilot kit as well. We can do insane stuff on such a tiny scale um, and just put it through as like a little corny keg. So it's like 20 litres, limited release. See what people in the tap room say uh, and work from that. So, yeah. Yeah, you guys are doing um, to plug you're yeah. you're doing like scratch cards aren't you yeah so it's um i don't know where they got the inspiration i think it was squid game yeah squid game. Yeah. bring along the card and get some beer um 
that's really limited release like literally there's 20 liters of it in existence <laughs> um and that's kind of friday night like, pop down get the latest brew um see what we're doing uh, and hopefully like try some other beers while you're there but this yeah scratch cards for a pint uh, of the latest beer that we've made or like trialed so, yeah. is is the plan that that's always going to be just like a one-off limited or do you think if something landed really well that you would brew it on a larger scale or is this yeah. only meant to be like that's it one and done yeah the idea behind it is to like gauge um sort of us to trial recipes that we think oh that's a bit risky um or to trial stuff that we're like is that gonna sell are people gonna uh is it gonna hit well with customers um so we can trial stuff and then if it if it does hit well then we'll definitely like, scale it up and and roll it out yeah that's i think that's a really good way of like testing out a recipe and as well you've got like your kind of like diehard fans are going to be drinking that yeah. so you can really gauge whether it's any good or not yeah I think you'll also have people drawn there that will just be like if you're doing weird and interesting things mm. like people will just go like i want to if they're close enough by Hello. They'll, they'll make that effort to go there to be like i want to try something like if that was around if it was around the corner from me and you were doing something that was interesting like the more interesting and unique something is the more I want to try it even if I'm like I don't think I'll even like it like that style's not my type of style or that flavor's not my type of flavor yeah mustard beer like I was like yeah want to try that because that's not something that everybody's doing but I think you're right I think there is like a lot more creativity happening now more so than ever I think not to bring it back to the pumpkin beers but there's so many more people doing pumpkin beers over the last two years than have ever really done it before in the UK. And I think that's just because people are allowed to take bigger risks now and, and do push boundaries and like people want that to happen. So yeah, I think that's like, it's really cool that you guys are going to be doing like test batches of interest and yeah. stuff as well. Um, I found me quite interesting actually to sort of understand your background and sort of like how you got to where you are. Cause I think if there's other people that are wanting to follow that journey, like, how did you get there yeah so I kind of I'm still at like the start of my career it feels um so I went left school at 18 knowing I wanted to do something uh mathsy sciencey but also practical um so I did a degree in chemical engineering uh so studied three years uh and then uh took a took a break thought I was going to go back and do a master's um, but I wanted to figure out what I wanted to specialise in. So I worked in bars for a bit. In my third year, I'd done a bit of sort of uh, a bio module. So then the lecturer who took that was so interested in yeast and like the, the, the byproducts of yeast make these different flavours in beer and it's so cool. So I took an interest in, in beer in that way in a sort of, oh, how can we manipulate yeast to make beer uh, that was the the starting point uh, and then worked in bars uh, worked out in a really like cask ale heavy pub uh, did, learned a load from the brewery that owned that um, how to keep cask well like it's a live product you can't just chuck it in a, in a, in a cellar skill. and hope for the best yeah it, the keeping cask is a skill and it, it's a dying skill as well uh, and then from there, I was like, I want to brew. I want to make this um, this stuff. Like, it's interesting. Like, how does it all work? Uh, I did homebrew for a little bit, um, but quickly got a, a really entry-level job uh, kind of on a packaging line out at Thornbridge. So I was there for nearly two years uh, in the time there. I was on packaging line, so I was filling cask, keg, can, bottle, <laughs> anything you can imagine we put it in. Uh, so I worked there all through lockdown, uh, trained up on sort of running machinery, cleaning machinery, uh, making sure quality checks were done, all that like good stuff that's really like important for quality of beer um, and keeping things clean as well. The most important thing is keeping things clean. And I learned that there. It's the best sort of starting, starting ground is just getting an entry level job where you're learning what's important to make good beer. Uh, and then from there, as lockdown lifted, a job came up um, at Heist to be a brewer, which is what I've been wanting to do from from like university. Is the 
a, a brewer. Uh, so went to an interview there. Uh, they offered me like a split role initially. So they said, we don't think we have the capacity to brew, to have like, like full time, more than one full time brewer is what they said. Like, we don't have the capacity for more than one full time brewer, but we really think you'd be an asset. Um, we have, we're opening a bar as well. So if you have your bar experience, we've seen that you're good on a bar. If you want a split role, it's there for you. So I took, I did a bit of thinking. I was like, oh, do I kind of go for it, take that risk? Um, I'm so glad I did. Uh, so in that, I've been there since July, and obviously this week it's now November. This week it's been like announced that I'm a full time brewer, uh, full brewery side, and I've like achieved what I started out to do, <laughs> and I get to be so creative as well. Um, and the guys there are so supportive and so yeah <laughs> it's so exciting like seeing yeah. you post about that I was like oh my god like I feel like you achieve something and then like I achieve something through you like I was <laughs> like oh my god like I was just so happy to see when you were like yeah full-time now like full-time brewing now I was just like oh my god I, yeah. I couldn't, like I couldn't vent my excitement enough about it like that is so cool so well deserved to be fair yeah. so yeah I'm still learning so much uh, like every day is like another day at school it feels um yeah I, yeah I feel I still I feel like I'm just still a baby in it all uh, and I'm just getting to play <laughs> which yeah. is amazing. but that's amazing that you've managed yeah. to get to a brewery that allows you to do that and that supports you to do that that's that's so amazing I was just gonna say like that's that is like yeah you might be saying you're learning things every day but like the fact that people are teaching you you are like I feel like when you stop learning as when you stop making really stale beers for lack of anything because if you're not if you're like this is what I do this is what I know how to do and that's that like and you lose that creativity it's almost like you, that you've got to run out of passion quite quickly when you do that yeah. and it, it will be reflected in your beers if you're always curious and always wanting to experiment like that's mm-hmm. gonna keep people interested for sure so yeah. there's nothing wrong with that <laughs> and there's like there's so many innovations like there's new hops being bred there's new ways that you can use yeast there's new flavors and things that you can and new things that you can put into the beer like what if you put seaweed in it what if you put yeah. this in it you know it's like it's constantly evolving a really like amazing thing about heist as well is that we're constantly like collabing being in touch with people being like hey do you want to work with us do you want to brew a beer like can we come and see how you brew yeah. and, and so much from people who've been in the industry like I, I got to go up to location the other week and i, I like was starstruck the whole day it's like <laughs> wow <laughs> like learning stuff from them uh yeah, their their sour's out now. Collab with Heist. It's uh, apple apple pie cinnamon sour. I'm so excited to try it. Just plug that. That's just, that's just, that's a lost story. Story's going to be all over. Yeah, that again. she's dreaming of yeah. it right now. I'm gone. That's that's me gone. Like, yeah. just pitch the idea to them, and I was like, hey, you like you know Dan and Adam. You've brewed with them like at the old site, um, and they're like, yeah, that beer was great. Like, what are you thinking? And I was like maybe this <laughs> so yeah and seeing their site and how they've expanded and just because they have the open fermenters and they okay. see across like the countryside and just being up there I think like how do you dry help a beer when it rains the rain yeah. <laughs> <Is> this... <laughs> that, yeah that was I think as well those um because their tanks like where their tanks were outside and it gets quite cold there was yeah. was yeah. it last year that it fro- yeah. that it was like it frozen froze. and then they were like yeah this this beer is delayed on its release because it was so cold and it froze <laughs> yeah <laughs> like that's gotta be so cool to like have that set up but then also when it's like yeah cool it's frozen or like <laughs> it it's rained <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. what do you do that is absolutely <laughs> mental <laughs> although saying that like looking and um, when we were like brewing at yours we you've got that window that looks out over the river and it was just that was so not like it was just such it's a lovely. nice it was 
I did not expect it. And then I was like, oh, what's out this window? And I looked and I was like, oh, that's a lovely little scene outside as well. We saw in the summer, like the little baby ducks, they they also went past. Uh, And so like every day I'd be watching, like, where are the ducks? Where are the ducks? Where are the ducks? (laughs) One time there was a man in the river. (laughs) Chris was telling us about that. He was just like walking through and I was like, oh, oh. Look, Scott, there's a man in the in the <laughs> so Scott's like peeping out, like peeping at this man, and he saw us peeping. I was like, ah, we've been caught peeping. But what's weirder, being peeping at a man? Yeah, well, being a man in a river. Well, I was gonna say, like, or like wading. Is it weird that you're peeping, or is no. it weird that he's just <laughs> in the river? I'm just saying. Can we call our next beer? Peeping <laughs> at the man in the river. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or we've been caught peeping. We've been caught peeping. Beer, no. We That's can't be nice now. Let's do it. No, we've no, been no. Caught I, I, I just like peeping at a man in the river. <laughs> it can it have some sort, some form of marshmallow in it? Marshmallow. <laughs> yeah, mar- vegan marshmallow. Yeah. Oh, now you're just like, now you're saying like apple, cinnamon, pie. I'm like dreaming of that. I'm like, oh, can we make more pie flavors? Can we get like <laughs> pecan pie or like? Okay, no, I like while I was. Well, Every cupcake flavouring for that. Pumpkin pie. <laughs> when I came up with a, when I was ill, I was like, sort of in and out of craziness. I came up with loads of beer ideas. Came back and I was like, oh Scott, while I was away, I thought of this really good beer idea. And then as I said it, I was like, that's a really bad beer. Sorry, that was COVID. And then as I say it, I'm like, he just looks at me and I'm like, mm, no. Sorry. <laughs> did you like get the whole idea out or did you like start saying it and then you get like slightly less yeah like halfway through anyway. i'm like ah oh. what so what i was gonna say was this but no okay. <laughs> it's gone <laughs> <laughs> oh that's, like what is what is one of those like insane ideas i just need to know i feel like it was like cough cough syrup flavor so it's like cherry, <laughs> like pretty strong cherry but then with yeah, like a really strong. A fish- we could do a fisherman's friend. Yeah. <laughs> like, what if we put Dennis, MSG Dennis. in the bin? Like, it's going to be great. <laughs> it sells so well. <laughs> MSG. I was just waiting to do like some type of like omnipolo, like too many ingredients together that don't really belong. But you like right out the gate, you're like, oh, like, I don't know, like cough syrup. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Or like, like comfort food. I was like, what if we had like vanilla ice cream, but with custard? Uh, well, I can't remember. Do you know when you're just like, I said that and I regret it and I'm going to wipe it from my memory. I don't think that one's the bad. I don't think that was the cough syrup. Maybe that's question. <laughs> but the ice cream with the custard. Uh, yeah. That could be good. You could do like a set. You could do like a whole set where you've got like Ooh. a pie one and then you have like an ice cream custard one and then you can blend them together beer blenders yeah i think that's that sort of covered all the, all the ground i'm really excited to to go back up and and visit again and um try more beers probably take my husband and me this time maybe um we went to we went to commune for dinner yeah, which yeah. was such a cool experience we went to hop hide out there um which is so like, like chat to jules or yeah yeah Hi, really, really briefly <laughs> it was it was quite yeah. busy to be it was fair, really busy, especially the time yeah. we went yeah. Um, but I want to go back there and eat again because oh, I've got a peanut butter and jelly burger. Oh, and then I went home and no I way. made it. I like made the same thing. So it was like chili jam and, and peanut butter. So I just did that at home. And it was like, I mean, it wasn't as good, obviously, as when you're buying a <laughs> yeah. nice greasy burger. Yeah. But it did it did the job. But there was like <laughs> Korean food. There was so much good stuff. And I love that I could just order at the table. And there was craft beer. It was heaven. So that's like good date night spot that I've got to go and take my husband to. And then we went to Shakespeare's on the night we got oh, there. So good. Um, they had a Decrom tap takeover, which was pretty cool. Oh, so good. Uh, where else did we go? Tori lost her mind because because uh, of. A half was only one pound ninety five. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I put that in the message to you, Rachel. I was like, "It's yeah, really yeah. cheap." <laughs> I was like, "Excuse me, like what?" <laughs> They're like, "Yeah, like one pound seventy five." I was like, uh, wow. "Okay, I think I know when I'm being scammed." Like, I was like, <laughs> um, but yeah, and it was like really good, like really good beers. So sub, so sub yeah, like yeah. two quid for beers. I was like, "What?" Um, that was brilliant. We went to Bar Stewards. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
yeah so that Helen was really really from, good Helen from Lost Industry yeah, yeah. she yeah. has a step when she's brewing so <laughs> So I'm going to need you to go and look at Helen's step and make me one of those for the next time I come up. I'll have you're, just gonna have to bring, you're just going to have to <laughs> yeah. bring a step with yeah. you everywhere I'll just, you I'll just go bring my kitchen steps. It's steps. fine. <laughs> we can carry them out some somewhere. Safety, <laughs> I would love to see you rock up to like a brewery or just like do a step I, somewhere. I can't um, that day. <laughs> Hello, I, I come with my own step. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think, is there any, we, where, where else do we go? We the Crow in. Can't think. I feel like we went somewhere else, but I can't remember. We popped by Beer Central to pick up some beers. We did. We picked up beers from Beer Central. Yeah. And we might have gone somewhere. I think that that might have been it. Did you go down towards Cal Island? We walked through we past, there yeah. to yeah. get to get to you guys yeah. we walked through there and that was a really cool area yeah. as well and i i loved how the buildings like you could clearly tell were old like industrial yeah. workshops and it was just really cool overall um got a coffee from somewhere around there as well yeah. on the way and that was really cool really nice um loved all the graffiti up everywhere yeah. like some of the artwork up on the side of buildings was just so so lovely uh really really nice stuff to, to look at um yeah. but yeah i we bet i feel like we barely even scratched i didn't yeah. realize how much there was in sheffield like just it's huge i, it's, I was like, like the beer seems incredible yeah we never made it to st mars because they closed right. too early we were like <laughs> we're never gonna get there but we, yeah. we we thought about it we're like by the time we get there we're gonna be really rushed and we don't want it to be a rushed experience. So unfortunately we didn't go there and then we didn't get any, we didn't go to like where Abbey Dale serve at us. Um, yeah. So we just have to go back and do it all again and actually yeah. get to see you this time. So really excited to yeah. do that. And uh, yeah, hopefully try more of your beers. Um, any yeah. Anything you want to plug that's coming up? Any beer releases or socials or anything else? Um, we're doing some more cans for over Christmas. If you want to do some cans, we've got some really big beers that are going to go into sharer bottles, hopefully. Ooh. Hey. Ooh. Um, we'll get some sharer bottles done. Um, but yeah, just keep just keep looking for heist. We've got some cool stuff coming. <laughs> and if one thing doesn't suit you, there'll be something else that comes along that does. And they've got to go to the tap room and try our beer. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> come to the tap room. Well, it should yeah. when this come when this comes out as well. I'll be. Should, I'm assuming it's not. I mean, I'm not going to be under it's any not conditions that that's today. So. Out, by the end of the weekend, um, I mean, I don't know. People might be like, "That's amazing. I'm going for it." But this yeah. beer is so lit. I am. In <laughs> I am a bagel. I'm a bagel, <laughs> I'm a bagel now. <laughs> But yeah, definitely a place to check out. And I feel like if people check it out and they live nearby, that's going to be their new hangout. So, yeah, so cool. hands down, I would I would hazard a guess. I'd be willing to bet money on it. So cool. Thank you for joining us, thank Rachel. You. And thank you for having yeah. us brew yes. and inviting us. It's the best thing ever. It's like the coolest thing ever. Yeah. Um, I can't even put it into words. So I'm not going to try because <laughs> I just won't do it justice. So um, yeah, hopefully get to see you soon. Yes. Yeah, hope so. We've got a beer. It's so good. I've moved on to a second beer now <laughs> since we've recorded. I've moved on to a uh, New England IPA that uh, Rachel brewed. And yep. it's lovely. And I shouldn't even be drinking because I shouldn't <laughs> be drinking that much because I'm pretty sure I've got an ear infection, but I can't stop drinking the beers because they're really good. <laughs> so good. So... Like this is literally... I put your smell in the can because it smells. It smells amazing. It, it smells so good. It's ex- it's like it exactly like what a I wanted. Peanut butter and jelly sandwich, yeah. and I love it. That's it's like when I envision peanut butter and jelly beer. That is the smell that I yeah. expect. I'm so excited. I'm so glad that we had the opportunity to do that. Um, if you are in the Sheffield area, or if you can get to the Sheffield area, go to Heist and drink our beer. It is good as i said the spot is amazing yeah. like it is it's just amazing really, tap it's deceptionally deceptively <laughs> big spot yeah it's massive um uh, including the amount of lines they serve like all of it 15 and, and I, different high beers plus plus guest beers plus guest beers like that's the thing and 
I find that there's re- and the, the variety was so much like there's genuinely like something for everybody. Yeah. Like you had your your Kolsch beer, you had your rye beer, you had some wheat beers on there. There was IPAs, there was stouts, there's white stouts. Like there was saison. literally saison. Yeah. There was something for everybody, and that was just in the heist selection. Yeah. That's before you even move on to the guest beers. Um, the food's amazing. The the staff are like they're incredible. Oh, the staff are so lovely. So friendly. Yeah. They're so inviting. They're so just an inclusive and welcoming environment. I actually even saw, I believe it was them that I saw recently as well. Should have asked Rachel actually. Um, but I'm fairly certain they said they were investing in lids, I think, for their drinks. Yes, they were. Yeah, because there's been the some drinks spiking. spiking. Yeah, they have they have um, covers for covers glasses. For it. If if anyone's concerned, they can go to the bar and they can ask for it. Um, but they also said like you know you can you can leave drinks behind the bar and all yeah. that if you need to. Um, but I mean like that's not even something where they're like, oh, we're crowdfunding to get glasses for the. T-. They were like, we recognise that this is a problem that's happening, so we're going to fix that problem so everyone feels comfortable again. Yeah. Like that is, I'm I'm gutted we actually didn't ask Rachel about that because yeah. that is that for me that was so impressive. Um, but yeah, like that is to me that's just an amazing move by people that genuinely really care, and I feel like we were so welcomed, and even though we weren't people that are from another brewery like they didn't have to be as welcoming like they could have been like sorry Rachel's invited you to do this thing she's not well sorry that's it and they were still they still turned up and they still put 100% effort into it like they cared just as much yeah and that meant a lot like for me that meant a, a lot a lot and I learned a lot and again it's so cool seeing something you made on a brewery's website and you're just like made i don't want to look at the untapped results like <laughs> i don't think we can do it i think we'll be we, we don't want to make ourselves sad i don't want I'm, someone who drinks it guys it. i don't like peanut everyone, butter and jelly everyone's gonna like it yeah but it'll be the people that's like i don't like peanut butter <laughs> you shouldn't have got it but but yeah don't drink I just, good beer um, then no I, I think even if you don't like peanut butter and you don't like jam I, it's still seeing if it's so lit that you'll turn into a bagel because you don't know maybe you'll I think I'm a bagel food. now I think I'm, I'm a bagel, bagel. we're gonna yeah, start doing bagels. <laughs> like back bends I'm not stuff. that flexy no <laughs> we're mentally gonna mentally we're to bagels, bagels. <laughs> <laughs> this is brilliant like go to heist definitely go buy some when a beer so lady turn into a bagel um yeah let us know what you think Joe, if you want people to give feedback on our beer that we helped from start to finish, yeah, like I still don't believe that's real. Tell me if you've tried our beer and tell me that you liked it because uh, it's my base porter recipe. Just going to get that in there again. Um, I am a woman's brew on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. But if you want to talk to me about beer styles and about brewing and how you might get into that, you can come and find my beer school, which is Love Beer Learning. And we are on Facebook, Instagram, twitter i t- generally hang in hang out on instagram but we're also on tiktok and pinterest and we have a website which is lovebeerlearning.co.uk and you can email us lovebeerlearning at gmail.com tell us <laughs> that you have found a beer that is so lit you turned into a bagel and it was our beer <laughs> Sorry if they want to talk to you about our beer where can they find you if you want to tell me how much of a bagel you turned into because the beer was just so lit or if you just want to send me a really good meme yes i'm down we, for the memes. we need more beer names me, you can send me the send me the spicy memes that's fine um totally on board with that uh you can find me on instagram at adventures underscore in underscore hopsmism that's it that's it <laughs> I'm a bagel already. I'm just <laughs> bageling um, myself away. We are bagels. And on that note, cheers. cheers. <laughs>